Hello everybody, Horst here again. I have another game between myself, Protoss, and Fatty, who is Zerg. Now, I've been using a lot of gimmicky strategies in a lot of my uh, replays I've uploaded, where I go fast air, or I do something like Phoenix into Colossus. Lately, I've been finding more and more that it's not working so well once you get higher into Diamond. In the past, maybe week, I've jumped from 1400 Diamond to like 1700 Diamond. So I've been working on more uh, standardized strategies. Here I'm going to be doing a 3-gate fast expand into 6-gate timing push into Immortals plus High Templar, which is pretty powerful because it shuts down Mutalisks pretty well, because the first 6-gate timing push comes at a time that Mutalisks would be coming out and the t uh, Zerg doesn't have a critical mass of them, and it can hold off Hydralisks and uh, Roaches until you get out those Immortals and High Templar. But we'll see what the Zerg reaction to this is here. Again, it's just st uh, every Protoss build pretty much starts off the same way. You go fast gateway, then you go 14 gas, then you get uh, a core to block. No matter what you're doing, it's always the same. But throw down a quick pylon here to block the Zerg expansion. I don't really like cannon rushing because it seems like too much of an investment when you can just do something like all in Nidus Mirror or something like that. I know a lot of pro players do it, but I just prefer the cheap, effective pylon down here. It does block his expansion from going down until he get a pool up. If he's overly greedy and chooses to go for a expansion before hatch, uh, before a pool, this will punish him for that. And a lot of players do that on bigger maps where you have a large distance between the bases, like on this one. One of the keystones of this strategy is you grab a fairly quick second gas while your core is warping in. Get mining that quickly. You throw a second gateway down, throw a third gateway down. You get three gateways pretty fast. Now this is going to look like a four gate to a zerg, so several zerg might overreact by throwing up spine crawlers at their expansion, but this is not a four gate push, this is a three gate expand. I also get a forge while I'm doing this, and one of the units I build, because I have the two gas, I build a lot of sentries. Sentries are great defensively, they're very cheap minerals, they're very heavy on the gas, I'm using all the minerals to build gateways, to build the forge, to build an, another nexus out here. So I do have an excess of uh, gas. I do not have an excess of minerals. Sentries are a perfect unit to take advantage of that. Now you can see because I blocked him, our expansions are going down at relatively the same time. This hatch just finished. He has some roaches out for defense. He sees I'm expanding, so he will try to pressure me with some roaches. But because I have a decent standing army right here, the pressure will not work. This is a fairly reasonable sized army for this time in the game. Now once you get this expansion up, you throw down more gateways and transfer over some of your probes. Now he does try to push here with these roaches. He has seven of them at this point, but the sentries and stalkers will make short work of this. You just force field them in to trap them so they can't run anywhere. Some of them are out of range. They can't hit your sentries, your zealots, which are cheap, absorb fire. These are stuck in prison here, out of range of everything. and then you just focus fire on them and tear them apart. Very easy to clean up. That puts him decidedly at a slight disadvantage. Not really decidedly, but he is at a disadvantage units lost. Now once my six gateways finish, I will push out and try to pressure him. The point of the pressure is not to win the game, the point of the pressure is to simply keep him from massing up drones, taking a third expansion. If you put pressure on him, he will have to react. He will have to make drone uh, roaches. He'll have to make spine crawlers. He'll have to make zerglings. He won't make drones. He won't make expansions. And he sees me pushing out, so he's making spine crawlers. He's making roaches. If you look at the production tab, you can see he's making only three drones at this point. Now you don't want to actually lose too many units without killing, doing enough damage here. Force field to keep the roaches from running away so they can't kite. Just kill whatever you can without over committing to this. And once your zealot wave in the front starts to die, it's usually a good idea to pull back until you can warp in some reinforcements. With six gates, I should have a, pro a proxy pylon going down here. But you can warp in reinforcements relatively quickly and pull them up to the front. I do have the plus one weapons almost done researching. If I'd started that earlier, this attack would have been not really much more effective because it doesn't have many Zerglings, but you can see the large number of units you're able to macro up very quickly with this strategy. I 
I just realized I don't have sound on for the game. Let me fix that. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Much better. But whenever it looks like you're actually overwhelmed, you just fall back. Again, the point of this is not to win. I see he has Hydralisks out now, which are extremely effective against gateway units. So I'm just going to decide to pull back. If you look at the units lost tab, it's fairly even right now. So it's not really like I wasted anything in that attack. He held it off well. I did some decent pressure. We can live with that. Start getting a Twilight Council and Immortals out. Immortals are excellent at eating through roaches. And also want to start working on taking my third expansion. I choose to take the gold instead of this uh, more easily defensible one here because I want to adopt an aggressive stance in this game. If I take this, I'll be forced to defend it more, which means I'll be staying around this area more often so he will have less of an easy time taking his own gold. But he destroyed my proxy pylon, some little supply block at the moment. Another very important upgrade to get is sell at leg speed and Templar Archives when you can afford it. Uh, should, we should be mining more gas here. It's very important to mine all the gas you can because Templar are extremely gas heavy. And there goes the Archives. The Archives is slightly later than I would have liked. Usually about a, uh, I like to get it like a minute before this so I can have Templar out and ready by 14-15 minutes in. This is a very macro oriented strategy because it doesn't really rely on ending the game anytime soon. I've had games go as long as 48-50 minutes with this strategy. As some of you on the BNet forums might have seen. That was a crazy game against Nick. I'd like to uh, post it here, but unfortunately it would just be a huge file and take forever to upload. If you actually want to see the replay, go to the Battle.net forums and check it out. I did lose, but it was pretty epic anyway. Now here, I make a pretty bad decision and I push out before I have Storm against all these Hydralisks into a bad concave doesn't really work out so the great thing about sentries is you can force field to a uh, retreat fortunately I didn't lose any immortals I just lost basically gateway units which are easily replenished so my macro is starting to slip a little bit because I have only six gateways so I have around five more here storm is finally finished researching so I'll have Templar for the next battle that is a good thing he's massing up a big Hydra Roach Ball now he pushes the Hydras one direction and the <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And he pushes the roaches in the other. It's a decent strategy to surround and flank me. And unfortunately, my Templar don't have enough energy to storm yet. I'm caught just a few seconds beforehand. Now, it looks pretty bad for me, so I'm going to just split my force in half and take on the roaches first. Then, when he comes over and tries to help out his roaches, they'll already be dead, and then I can focus on the Hydras. Turns a pretty bad battle for me to something that looks pretty good looks pretty even resources wise at this point the immortals are just amazing units against roaches when you have more than two of them I really did not know how good immortals were until recently but thanks to Nick from the BNet forums for suggesting that immortals plus high templar would be a pretty good uh, end game composition so after that battle if you look at the resources tab I am definitely ahead I didn't lose nearly as much as he did in that attack and I am at a much higher tech level right now with Templar and Immortals out. This looks like a drop. It looks like he's trying to fake me out. Maybe swing around once I react to it. However, I spot him coming in. I just push him away. And keep warping in more units. Keep the macro low. Expand more. If you look at the income tab. By now I have 80 probes. And a respectable income of 2,000 minerals per minute. This is probably about all the probes you're going to want to make. But at this point, I have everything I need to be extremely aggressive and to push. So, I will do so. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm waiting on. Observers, yeah. Now, the thing about Zerg is you never want to really fight on the creep. So whenever you push out, you usually want to take observers with you. But in this case, I decided to just go for it. You can see the storms just melt through the hydralisks. The immortals just melt through the roaches. Because I have so many gateways up, I can instantly reinforce this army. There it goes. Huge number of reinforcements can just warp in instantly. I look at these immortals, 16 kills, 7 kills, 16 kills. They're definitely worth their weight in this army composition. 
And here comes some more stalkers. Now he can't keep up with this kind of macro. And he focuses fire the immortals, of course, but as he focuses the immortals, the hardened shield really takes a lot of the heat and allows my stalkers to do a lot of damage. With plus two weapons, we're already at 16 damage per shot versus armor, which is actually respectable. A lot of people don't give the stalker the credit it deserves as being a decent unit. He was trying to switch to Spire here, but it was too little too late. And because I already had weapon upgrades, the Spire would have been fended off pretty easily by my stalkers. Because his uh, Spire Mutalisks would not have any upgrades at all of their own. Although he did get uh, Flyer Attacks level 1. But that is a pretty good strategy where you go 6 gate push into Immortals and Templar. Hope you guys enjoyed the replay and hope it helps you out. Thanks guys.